So in this video, we're going to learn how to do full fine tuning on a model to train it to summarize dialogues. We're going to pull our dialogue data set from Hugging Face, pull our model from Hugging Face, and then train it using the Transformers library. First things first, if you're in Google Code Lab, please make sure to come up to runtime and change your runtime type to a T4 GPU or some GPU. You can use a TPU, just don't use the CPU. Uh, the model that we're using is called, is called BART. It's got 400 million parameters and training it is very computationally intensive. And so having a GPU is gonna speed up your training dramatically. On a CPU, the training will take a very long time. And so I've already installed all these packages, so please pip install those. And now we're going to load in our model. And now we're using a sequence to sequence model. BART is a sequence to sequence model, and this is its model card ID. You can look it up on Hugging Face if you would like. The, um, the model is pretty large. It's got 400 million parameters. And so I've already loaded it in, so I'm not gonna get any of the uh, lo status loading, et cetera, that you usually get. I'm gonna load in our data set, and we're gonna have to pip install these requirements real quick. And then I'm going to load in my data set. I've already loaded this in, so I may not get the progress bars. But nonetheless, I do have my data set here. And it contains a training, validation, and test set. And every example comes with an ID, a dialogue, and a summary. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, generate a summary using our base LLM, this BART model that we pulled off Hugging Face, that's been trained on some general text. And it should be able to summarize some text pretty well. But for our use case, it's, it's not going to do so well, and you'll see it. And so I created this function. It's going to take as input a sample, right, and then an LLM, and which is our BART model. And it's going to create this prompt. And this prompt says, summarize the following conversation. It's going to have, it's going to put the dialogue right here, and then it's going to end with summary. And then it's going to expect BART to finish that summary. And that's what we do here. And so I'm going to print this out. This may take a second because BART is kind of big. And so generation is a little slow. So as you can see, this is our dialogue. It's a conversation between two people named Hannah and Aunt Amanda. And what the model generated, the model generated summary, BART. BART just looks like it kind of replicated part of the conversation. Um, hey, do you have Betty's number? Let me check. Hannah ask Larry. Hannah didn't really ask Larry. So not only does it, it's not doing a good summarization, it's it's uh, not really uh, learning the dialogue. Um, Hannah's not the one that said, ask Larry. It was Amanda that said um, right here, like, ask Larry. So that's not really right. And the correct summary says, Hannah needs Betty's number, but Amanda doesn't have it. She needs, referring to Hannah, to contact Larry. And so that's the summary that we want, and that's the label. And this is what we're getting right now. So as you can see, it's not really good at summarization, but it will get there. And so we're going to first prepare our data set for training. Now, if you realized, we have 14,732 examples, which is kind of big and would take forever with this type of model. And so even on a GPU. And so what we do is we go through each example in our training data, and we create this uh, prompt here. We turn them into this. We create this prompt and then we go through and we create two columns, input IDs and labels. Input IDs is going to tokenize the prompt and labels is going to tokenize the summary, which is our answer, our prompt completion. And what we're going to do is we have to set the pad token because this model has is one of those models where you have to set the token that you're going to pad any sequences that aren't long enough uh, with. And we're going to map this tokenize inputs function to every example in the data set. We're setting batched equal to true, so it's a little bit faster. And we're going to remove any of these old columns. We just want to keep input IDs and labels. And what we're also going to do is we're going to filter this data set. This is another data set preprocessing function that we're going to that you will use a lot if you use Hugging Face. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter. Any, um, any this data set down to where I'm only going to keep the the examples whose index modulus 100 is equal to zero and it's just a way to keep every 100 
examples and just shorten the data set down from 14,732. I uh, believe that was the amount. Yeah, down to a smaller number. We're, we're only trying to get a little bit of data. And you could have, you could have used shuffle and select. I actually advise using shuffle and select um, to get a better representation of the data, but this should be fine for our example. And so as you can see, the progress shows that it mapped to every single example in our data set across uh, train, validation, test. And let's just print out the shapes of our data sets here. And we see up 148 examples in our, our data set because we went from 14,732 divided by 100, and that should get us uh, at 148 and about 148 and then our validation and test sets have shrank as well now just to show you what happened in the train set and in the test and validation as well these are the only columns we have the input ids which is the tokenized prompt and then the labels which is the tokenized correct summary and we're just training this model to take in that prompt and produce that summary and what you need to do is you need to get your access token because after we train this model we are going to push it to our account. Now let's go back to Hugging Face. I'm gonna get my access token here as usual. I'm gonna copy it, come back in, log in, and it says token is valid, permission is right. Remember you have the right, the right permission so that you can commit changes to your repo. And now this is the new thing that we're learning here. Transformers have, has this trainer library that allows for you to very easily train a model and we're gonna pass in training arguments and we're gonna pass in training arguments to our trainer. And this right here is what allows for us to specify the directory uh, name of our model in the hub. And I'm gonna uh, push mine to Ingenium Academy, which is my account, slash name of my model, Bart CNN Samsung Fine Tuned. And I put the output directory as this right here as well. And you would just put your account right here, obviously. And this is the learning rate that I chose. This is the number of train epochs I chose. I only chose one because it takes about three minutes per epoch for full fine tuning. You'll see that PEFT does not take three minutes. It takes about a little under two. So you shave some time off because you're only training 1% of the parameters. And I set auto fine batch size to true. It should default to one though. BART's kind of large for, for, for Google Colab GPU. And so you're going to default to one probably. And it's just going to log everything at the end of the steps. Make sure to pass in a tokenizer with your model to trainer so that you can, um, you can, whenever you pull your model from the hub, it comes with the tokenizer. I give it the train and the eval set. And I'm going to instantiate these right here. And so once it gets instantiated i'm not going to train the model because it does take three minutes here but i did train it beforehand as you can see and this is our training loss and this is our validation loss which is the cross entropy loss function and then now what we do is we just push this model to the hub i've already pushed my model to the hub if i can go into my account right here and look it up it should be right here bart cnn samsung fine-tuned and it should show up in your hub and give it some time if the model card's not right or whatever, and you can use it just like any other Transformers model. It, it definitely feels good to contribute. And here is some code here to be able to load in and retest your model. And so I can actually load it in like this. And let's give it a second to load back in. And so I'm gonna go ahead and generate the summary as well, and it already got out. And this is the new summary that it gives. So we had our dialogue beforehand. We remember what it did last time. It just kind of regurgitated the conversation and got the conversation wrong. Here it says, Hannah asked Amanda if she has Betty's number. Hey, do you have Betty's number? That part is correct. Amanda can't find it. That's also correct. Says she asked Larry, so, so she asked Larry to call her. That's not correct. Amanda is asking Hannah to, to call Larry. Um, not Amanda's not doing it herself. Now, Amanda is going to text Larry to ask him to call Betty. And so that part is incorrect as well. Hannah is going to text Larry. Um, now, this is the ground truth. Hannah needs Betty's number, but Amanda doesn't have it. She needs to contact Larry. Now, it's not close, but that's a lot better than what we just had. It's not regurgitating the conversation and, not, and also getting it wrong. It's actually trying to produce a summary and although it gets part of it wrong, it gets part of it right. 
And so in the next video, we're going to show how to do PEFT on this model. And you're going to see that PEFT is not only faster, um, and, but, you know, it definitely improves the model just a tad. And let's hop into that video.